Okay, so uh, with regard to the uh, things that we have covered so far uh, in the mobile app development course, we have done um, sessions regarding Firebase authentication using Google. Uh, after that, we have started uh, doing um, uh, other sections, which uh, are basically um, uh, storing data in Firebase using Android, uh, Android Studio. In the so in the last session, we have uh, gone through this activity uh, where we uh, stored data in the Firebase project. Uh, and uh, in the real-time database over in the Firebase using Android Studio. Uh, so we have uh, gone through these steps where we first uh, formed the required layout files in XML codes, uh, and then we created the required uh, Kotlin files. So uh, all the necessary source codes are available in this file. Uh, so you need to also include the necessary libraries, uh, the necessary libraries in the Gradle file. After that, you can include uh, the Kotlin files with the basic logic. So the different Kotlin files that you require are also given in here. So you can try this out on your own. And if it doesn't work, you can let me know. Uh, like if you get an error or something, you can send me that error. Uh, as a screenshot and then I will uh, answer your uh, concerns uh, if uh, right from my end. So these are the things that we have implemented in that last class and we have seen how we can up upload certain data to the Firebase interface. We also can uh, retrieve data back from the Firebase and update that data in, in the app uh, itself. We can, um, we can obtain data from Firebase and then uh, show that in our application as well. Uh, so, so this is the first part of that uh, work, which is storing data in the Firebase real-time database. So once this is completed and you are also familiar with it, we will uh, go towards that uh, next part, retrieving data from Firebase real-time database. In today's class, however, like we are going to go through a new or a new topic where we will be learning about the activity cycle of Android um, Android applications. Okay, so I will be doing that section as well. Uh, so I believe that since we are coming to the end of our module, some sections that we require knowledge about, we need to have have them covered so i believe that the second uh, like um, as i mentioned to you i have already done this part on storing data in firebase real-time database using android studio i will give a similar activity related to this topic with regard to retrieving data from the firebase real-time database uh, as a like an instruction sheet i will upload that in the lms uh, so once i upload that instruction sheet you'll be able to go through that and follow it on your own and then you can try to see whether it works. As of now, what we are doing is what we have done in the last class is that we have uh, uploaded data to a certain database in the Firebase and we have seen the data getting uh, uploaded in real time to the Firebase project. So the second part we will discuss in the next uh, you know, mentoring class on uh, Wednesday. Uh, so uh, before uh, going to that uh, uh, step, we will discuss about the activity life cycle of the Android application uh, in today's class. Okay, so activity life cycle, cycle is uh, also something that is uh, required to have the knowledge on. So therefore we will discuss about that in today's session. This uh, activity life cycle is something that uh, that is required to know, uh, mainly because in some interviews uh, where, where they uh, check your knowledge, they check the, your knowledge on this activity life cycle process. 
Uh, so uh, therefore it is required, I think, for you to have this knowledge, which will be useful for you during interviews. Not only that, it will also be useful in the applications. So one thing is that uh, in order for you to develop a certain application, you need to know these states. Uh, so the the states and how they, uh, like what are the functions that are running on each state is important. Um, for the developer, uh, one reason is that when you are developing a certain app, like banking app, banking or banking, you are using some, uh, you know, very secure features. So once a certain user access their banking account, they are requested to enter their passwords or enter their secret codes. In those kind of stages. Uh, the operation of the application should be uh, kind of uh, controlled and uh, the unnecessary uh, operations must be subdued so that only the secret code entering part is uh, highlighted and is available for the user. So only uh, if that in code or the secret code is uh, given by the user only, uh, the application will proceed to the next uh, activities for the screens. Uh, so for that uh, kind of application, the user, the person who's, uh, who's developing this application should include the secret code, uh, secret code entering, you know, like uh, process in a certain application, in a certain act, uh, stage in this uh, life cycle. So uh, we will discuss that in detail. So first and foremost, an activity is something we call as a screen, one of, one of the screen in an app. Activity means like a, one screen in the app. Uh, so this one screen or one activity will consist of um, like multiple, uh, multiples. Uh, I mean, each activity will go through multiple stages. So these multiple stages can be uh, called as this life cycle. So the life cycle will constitute of basically four stages. There are basically there are four stages. One stage is uh, the activity being continued, continually running, activity running, and then activity pausing, uh, then activity stopping, and then activity getting destroyed. So most of the time, the main activities or ma main stages of an, uh, of an activity is uh, running, uh, I mean running the activity or activity running stage, then pausing stage, stopping stage and destroying stage. So these are the basic, I think, uh, four stages of the, uh, you know, activity. Running, pausing, stopping and destroying. So these are the main four stages. Uh, apart from that, there are other functions also that are required for the, uh, for the application to run. There are other functions also that are required for the application to run. So they, they also are needed. So we are going to talk about mainly uh, all those different actions and methods that are required for the activity to run. We will learn about those things one by one. So that there are mainly seven methods, seven methods or functions that enable this uh, life cycle to occur. So there are seven methods. One method is known as on create, on create method. So on create method is something we can see in all the uh, applications we have developed so far. So in most of the, in any activity that we have, in any activity file that we have, it could be the main activity or else it could be another activity, sign in activity. There could be <clears throat> multiple activities to a certain application. So we can consider any single activity. And in that activity, we, we are able to see that uh, we have this on create option, on create function. 
right? So the onCreate function is the function which is used to initiate the application, right? And create the activity. So initiate and create the activity. The onCreate method is used to initiate and create the activity. So this is the place where the activity is first created. After that, we have this on start method, right? So once that activity is launched, you will first create the activity. Then once that activity is created, the, the screen is created, this on start is the function that enable the user to see the activity, uh, to see the screen. The user is able to see the screen once this on start function has been activated. Right, so in the on create function, it has been created. Activity has been created using the uh, software development, uh, you know, uh, platform. Right, so after that, uh, the, uh, the on start function enables the user to view the uh, view the application screen. So this is the second step. After that, on resume means that. Uh, uh, the activity uh, is starting to like interact with the user on resume means once the customer is interacting with the application we call that on resume so that is the uh, importance of on resume after that uh, we have on pause on pause method yeah, on pause means that the activity goes into the background but not yet been killed but what we mean by that is that if we have a certain application right we have a certain application we can run that application and see how on post is working uh, so i will run this application and then uh, we can see all the stages of this application working in there, right? So we'll be able to see how on create is first initiated, how on start is initiated. Likewise, for that to happen, I also need to mention I have included some, uh, you know, commands in this uh, uh, code, in this Kotlin code, I have entered some commands. So using those commands only, uh, these messages will be shown in the application. Right, so uh, I mentioned to you that there are like different functions uh, which we call as on create, which is available here on create, and then we have this uh, on start function, on restart function, on pause, on restart. We didn't discuss as of now, and then on pause, likewise, on resume, likewise, we have discussed. So those commands, they are av available. Uh, I have I have called them and then I have given some commands um, to occur when, when these uh, methods are activated. So in here, right? So uh, we will start from the beginning. Now you can see that there are some messages appearing in here which shows the uh, state of the app activity at that time. So we are talking about states, activity states. So I'm going to run this again. I'm going to see this application starting from the, from the very beginning, right? So, yeah. So in here, now they are in this page. So in the main, so in here I have, Okay, so, uh, so with related to this, this main activity is related to the adapter, uh, the place where I have enabled the uh, sign out and contact list buttons. So this is the page. So whenever I get these things out, let's say, so I'm going to remove this. Then I will be, I will remove this also. I will run again. Okay.
Okay. We'll just sign out first. Now, now we are in this page. Go into the next page. Now it will be showing some messages at this place on destroy. On destroy is called when some other activity got destroyed. So we came on to on start and on resume. Uh, so we can see what happened as well in this log activity, log cat. So in here we can see under each um, the title of the activity, we can uh, we can see how the uh, different st activity stages have been called at each time. So these activity stages have been called in this uh, order. So first on create has been called, then on start has been called, then on resume. And then on the so sorry, I got a disturbance from a call. So I I will re uh, tell what I have told. Uh, so in the log cat messages, I can also see what is the different activities that we have excited at each time so in here i can see all the steps that the activity has taken so they have uh, shown the messages once each of the functions are activated so this is how the uh, activity stages will be um, created so first on create function will be activated the on create function will be um uh, implemented after that on start so in during on start the user can interact with the activity and then afterwards on resume means like the user can um you user can interact with the activity um so in on start function the user can see the activity on resume means the customer the user can interact with the activity after that, if the customer does not do any interaction with the activity or the screens or the application, then that screen will be on pause. After that, if the user goes to another activity, that, that certain activity will be on stop. After that, if I decide to remove that activity entirely from my uh, applications or, or the open applications, if I close one, close that application then the stage of that activity will go to on destroy so that will be what is shown in here right so that most of the time that if i get these messages on restart on restart means i'm restarting this application from early it was not active currently it is back to active stage so then it will be shown as on restart and then uh, it will go to on start and then it will go to on resume once i go to the contact list then again uh, uh, I, do, I, I will be shown recycler view on create cold that means i'm in the on create function stage then i will go to the on start and then on resume on resume means i interact with this screen if i stop interacting with the screen i will be shown on stop uh, method Likewise, I can see some stages being uh, reached or implemented in the application. So once I go to any kind of a other screen, the previous screen will be destroyed, right? Once I go from one screen to another screen, the previous screen which was there will be either on pause or it will be uh, like in the background. So it will be on pause. And in, it would also be on stop. If I don't interact with that, um, uh, you know, interact with that activity, it will not be, uh, you know, working uh, actively. So it will be in the foreground, in the background. 
So um, if it is, uh, if that screen is in the background, then the user will not be interacting with that screen. If the user is not interacting with that screen, that means it is not active. And in that, uh, in that situation, when the user cannot interact, then we 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 can uh, say that that previous activity is on stop. The activity is not visible to the user. After that, if I destroy that uh, to the application, if I close the application, I will be shown some messages which will show me that the activities has been destroyed. So it will come after some time. So now only it shows on destroy method. So uh, because I have destroyed or the, I have closed the application, each each activity in that application will get destroyed. So they will come to the destroyed stage. That is what I mean. Not not the actual meaning, but they will be in that stage. There will be such kind of stages in activity life cycle. So let's go back to that figure. When, when we have this figure, we can see the different st stages that the activity will go through while, while we are running the application. So the first one, as I said, is on create. And the on create one will be creating the activity. Uh, on start means the uh, activity will be uh, visible to the users. On resume means that uh, the... Uh, the activity will be uh, enabled to the user uh, so the uh, user will be able to use the activity after that on pause means that uh, the user is not no longer using the activity in a like a interactive manner because of that the activity will uh, will not be like live and it will be in the background but it will not be it will not be stopped. Yeah. Activity will not be totally closed. After that, we have this on stop. <laughs> on stop means the activity is not visible to the, the user. After that, on destroy method is called where the activity will be closed uh, by the user. And the activity will have to have to be restarted if somebody wants to uh, access this application again. Uh, so if somebody wants to restart, restart the restart should happening happen from this place. If uh, so, uh, that means that if you are on stop stage, then you can restart. But if you have gone to on stop and then you have destroyed, or if you have closed the application entirely. That means you can you have to open the application again to you know restart the application. So what I mean by that is that if you are having an application, right? If you are closing the application, you need to restart the application again. However, if you are having an already running application somewhere, now this is one such case where we have the running application running already in the background. So in such kind of cases, you will have this. Um, you know, applications already available to you in the background. In such kind of cases, you will be uh, returning back to the application through this uh, on restart stage. Right? You will be returning back to the application using 
through this on restart state. So on restart will be uh, continue will be then uh, moving towards on start method, and then we can access the application through on resume method. The new application will be running once you are not using the application. Uh, then you will be in the on pause method. After that, if you are not using the application again, the activity be, will be in the background and it will be on in the on stop mode. However, if you decide to close the activity altogether, then you will be in the on destroy method. Right, on destroy method will uh, close the activity and activity shutdown will be happening. So such kind of things will be there. So re restart will happen when uh, when we have the on stop stage uh, active in the application. Uh, so in that stage, the application will be still running in the background, although it is not seen or visible to the user. The user will not be visible or seeing the application. But then again, the user are able to access this application anytime and restart the application again. So from this stage, you will either close the application or restart the application. So any questions up to that point? So that is basically uh, the activity life cycle. So I will explain to you like we are some whiteboard as well. Uh, the each op operation of each uh, each activity stage. You write it down in here. So be uh be aware of this uh I mean content this activity life cycle. So this one is necessary for you to uh like you know get an understanding about how an Android app works once it is working in the uh, so any application will go through this uh, activity activity stages so the first is that each activity will constitute of uh, so activity is something we call as one screen of the app right so basically this is a general uh, definition so activity can have like multiple like child activities or child actions happening also inside the activity uh, the word activity in here it basically means like one screen right one screen or one one uh, one screen of your app so an app can can consist of more no more activities After that, each activity will go through multiple stages. Go through basically four stages. Those four stages are basically activity resumed. 
Activity resumed, activity destroyed. Sorry, activity on start. Sorry, activity on pause. Right, so activity will go through st stages. These are the stages that activity will go through. Activity will run. Activity will be on pause. It will be, uh, actually will, will be on stop. Then activity will be destroyed. Once it's uh, already started, these are the stages that it will go through. So these are the stages that an activity will go through once that activity has started. So these basic st stages will be uh, cons will be enabled through uh, basically seven methods. Functions or methods. One method is this on create method. On create method. On create method, and it, that method is basically used uh, when to create the activity, right? So this method is called when the app is first created or when the activity is first created. At the initially created, right? Once an activity is created, you don't have to create it again and again. Right? Until this activity is destroyed, this created activity is available uh, for the user. So this on start method is available when the activity is visible to the user. So on start method is invoked when the activity is visible to the user. So this uh, on resume method is invoked when the activity is interacting with the user. So on resume is used when the activity starts interacting with the user. So when we are having a certain application, see it starts with on restart, then it goes to on start. On start means I can see the screen. Then it goes to on resume. On resume means I can interact with the screen. I can interact with this screen. I hope it is clear. If you have any questions, you can ask. So, uh, so then we have on pause method. On pause method happens when this screen goes to the background. So when this screen goes to the background, oh, let's see that I push, put this back. See on pause is called in here, but this screen is in the background. Like, and then it's also called on stop, which means that now I'm not using the screen. I, I just put it in the background. I use another application, right? So this happens when I use another application. I keep this application in the background. So on stop, on pause, that means that the activity is in the background.
mainly on stop method means when the activity is becomes not visible to the user or actually it means that we cannot interact with the screen or the activity so in such case on stop method is called destroy when the activity is is closed So these are the six methods and we also have on restart. On restart is uh, revived when an activity is revived. When an activity is revived from the background. So these are the functions that are basically used, right? So in an activity life cycle, these are the basic functions that are used to enable the life activity life cycle and each act each stage in the life cycle. So each stage means that we have four basic stages. Four basic stages are these basic stages like resuming. So in resuming, this stage means that you are running the application actively. You are running, running the application actively with the user. So the user is interacting with the application. In post stage means that you are basically running the application in the background, but you are not actively using that. So you are keeping the application running in the background. So the activity actually. So that certain activity is running in the background, but you are not using it actively. The stopping means that you cannot see the application. Uh, in the uh, the activity of that certain application, you cannot see the activity of that certain application, but it uh, it is not entirely like operation is going on, uh, and it can be revoked, can be restarted from where it was currently, uh, previously. So where from where it was previously, you can revoke the uh, activity, then you can restart the activity. So in here, destroyed means you are closing the entire activity. So you have to, yeah, I mean, there's there's no way of restarting again after you destroy. You can only re, uh, you you can only start creating the activity again from the beginning. So you have to go through on create, on start, on resume. Likewise, all those three or uh, three steps to keep the app to get to a place where the app is running. After that, you can also have these rest of functions also uh, also occurring. The rest of the functions also can occur uh, once this uh, activity starts running. So activity running has to be done first. These functions has have to be run to get to that stage. So after that, you will be pausing, stopping and destroying the application. So these are the kind of uh, basic stages that we will be using or we will be actually making the activity go through when we are using the application. So you need to know basically these things mainly because when you are developing an application and in some cases, as I said before, when you are doing some kind of a like serious app building, which involves the uh, uh, banking, you know, banking security codes to be entered or some secure features to be entered or else you if you feel that you need some special things to happen in some uh, cases only then uh, you need you need to uh, be able to identify in what stage that feature has to be implemented so these kind of knowing these stages are important in cases where you need to build an application with special features right so the knowledge of this uh, activity cycle In order to implement the special features uh, and operations in the application. Okay. 
perfect. So it's important to have the knowledge about this activity life cycle um, in order to implement certain special features and also operation in the application. So for example, we can take like cases where we have this banking apps. Uh, when you banking app, when you want the user to um, enter a certain the rest of the activities, any the rest of the activities must be in the foreground or in the background and uh, only the uh, only the activity which involves with that involved only the activity involved must be in the foreground or in the front So when we have that kind of a thing, we we will be using this activity lifecycle to bring the necessary activity to the front and keep the other activities in the foreground. So depending on where you want to implement the features, you want to select the specific stage and implement the feature in there. So you, you want to select the specific stage where you stage where you want to implement want to implement a certain feature you need to and then want to see in order to get the necessary impact to output um, behavior get the necessary output behavior or the necessary behavior of the application from the application. So you need to implement the specific feature in that uh, selected stage in order to get the uh, correct application behavior uh, from the uh, from that application depending on, on that uh, specific uh, you know banking app or some app that you are building. You need to consider the stage. Then only you can implement the feature. Uh, and you can implement that feature in that specific stage. So if you take this uh, banking app situation, we can select the, the secret code, the secret code entering to happen in the on resume stage, on resume stage. Then all the other application activities will be in the background. So uh, that is basically regarding the uh, you know different stages, right? So we in so we have different. Uh, I I will show you some other uh, projects also. We have uh, activity life cycle. So this this is a uh, this is a, uh, an example of. An application that has the activity life cycles defined uh, in the defined in the uh, main activity. So I will run this application, and then I will explain like in different stages of the application. Uh, these uh, on create method, on start, on restart. Those uh, stages are getting activated. So all those stages can also be seen using this log messages as well so once the application is on in here on restart code on start is code so i can go in here and also see the messages appearing in here related to those activities so those activity messages will be occurring in this uh, 
uh, information under information messages. So I will remove all the ones that are there. And then I will try to track the ones that I require. As of the moment, I need to delete all the ones that are here. Then I will run it. So if I can uh, run this one, can go back. Then I will able to see some on pause method. So in here, if I try to figure out and filter out the main activity ones only, I will be able to see these messages coming. So as of now, now I have gone out from the application because of that state of the application went from on pause then it went to on stop and then it also went to on destroy because i have gone out from the application that application is no longer there so it if it is uh there in the background then it will see, still be okay but it shows that it is on create is cold because that application has started or initiated again That application has initiated again and therefore it, it is showing on create state and then on start state then on resume state then it is now in the on resume state if i'm going to put this in the background then on pause will be cold cold then on stop also will be cold because that functionality of the activity will be lost to the user although it is seen it is observed but the user cannot interact with the activity uh, and therefore, if the user cannot interact with the activity, then we call that on stop. If I remove this altogether, I should be able to uh, see some on destroy me messages also appearing. But I, I believe I need to run it again and get it because I think I did not stop it from the correct manner. So this is entirely starting now. I can see main activity on post, on stop, on destroy. So these are the previous ones. Currently, I'm starting a new application. So those newest messages are in the bottom. So in here, I can see on create, on start, on resume has been called. Then if I try to like get it into the foreground, it will show it's on post, then on stop. If I destroy this one, close this one, it will show on destroy. I hope it is somewhat clear to you. Uh, so those are the things I want to say about the activity life cycle. The activity life cycle can be seen in any of the applications that we have, not only in the basic application that we are talking about, but also in the recycler views and other uh, applications with recycler views and all the complex Com complex components uh, uh, it doesn't matter the complexity of the application the application will go through these stages every time and uh, it will keep uh, um, uh, it will keep running the uh, the flow chart of the activity life cycle any questions to this point Right. <clears throat> One thing again, something you will be able to notice is that there is some uh, pattern between this uh, activity stages. So there's some pattern. So uh, when I take the two stages, uh, when I take the two stages on start and on stop. So these are two stages which are opposite to each other. The on start method is making the screen visible to the user. On stop method is making the screen not visible to the user. So this is visible and this is not visible. Exact opposite of the on start method is given in on stop. Right. And then afterwards, if I take another pair on resume and on pause. So these are the ones that uh, that are 
working together which means that that when the activity is starting to interact with the user it is on resume function on resume function and then on post means that the user is no longer active and the user is not no longer using this activity so these are also opposite equal and opposite functions on resume and on post and then uh, i take the other one which is on create and then on destroy these are also opposite equal and opposite kind of functions which means that the on create method is uh, creating a certain screen creating an, a certain screen where in on destroy the on destroy method is actually destroying or closing a certain activity so on create on destroy are opposite activity or opposite functions in that activity life cycle so these are how this uh, you know functions are defined so this is uh, basically how you can remember those functions on restart is a separate function and that on restart is functioning operating only if the uh, activity has been uh, in the background and then the activity needs to be revived again so that is basically regarding the restart function or method so i hope it was clear to use in this session so if you have any questions let me know in the meantime, I will share with you this uh, OTP for the record, attendance record. If possible, please mark your attendance. In today's session, the lecture note that we have discussed, I will share with you in the video that I'm sharing in the LMS. Okay. If you have any questions, you can put in the chat. Thank you for attending today. And uh, that would be it for today's session. Thank you.